are live from Rock Wareman's living room. Well, here we are. It's, uh, it's just me tonight, and I thought we'd have a little fun because um, we, we got the word from on high, which I didn't really need, but um, I've actually got people here today. Um, it's family. And they're going to be uh, making comments. And when I say making comments, uh, derogatory comments about my playing ability and no. physical appearance, primarily. Um, but yeah, we're going to, the idea is we're going to, or I'm going to play just a whole ton of TV theme show songs, TV theme songs. Um, you know, back in the day, the, the, the purpose of the opening of the show was to get some of the primary credits on screen, usually for the cast, the director, those kinds of things. And they would shoot a separate thing that way back in the early days, it was a kinescope that they would just use and then go to, in the very early days, the live cameras, because that's all they had. But eventually it got to the point where this fixed thing, they also realized that it became sort of an icon. Um, there are people who will know exactly what this is. written by Alexander Courage back in the day. And that, of course, is the opening from Star Trek. And um, the theme music from Star Trek is also the same as a jazz standard called Out of Nowhere. So, um, and I will play it in... Uh, <laughs> When people are playing that tune, they'll start their solo and they'll go. But the Star Trek. that was sort of like, hey, it's on, you know, and everybody would gather around. And these became sort of shorthand for the tune itself. I made a note because I wanted to, um, you remember the girl, the, the woman that sang, goo? It was a woman named Luli Jean Norman who really never did anything else again. She was a friend of Roddenberry or something. And she, you know, just sang no syllables all through there. It was a very distinctive sound. And they thought it sounded like a theremin. They thought it sounded like the future. So um, we have these sort of iconic moments that would sort of be like a calling card or a call to attend. Um, <laughs> Give me a couple seconds to figure out that one. There's another one that's uh, known because it's whistled, and I'll mention that in a minute. Ralph Meyer out there. Oh, Ralph. absolutely. Ralph Meyer is out there, and yeah. he's already picked Star Trek. Oh, well, Star Trek was a given. Did he? Oh, you know, there's a delay. Did he get the one I whistled? Uh, I don't know. There's a delay. I'll oh, have to wait. Rowan knows. See. What is it? Well, I mean, what's the... What? Lassie. <laughs> it's Lassie. <laughs> and people said that, that 
they was, people would always get it confused with green sleeves. <laughs> similar, but um, I think the thing that made it so identifiable and so iconic was the whistling. And you heard that and you knew that your show was starting. That's another example of um, a fixed little piece at the top of the show because then the announcer uh, gave the names of, uh, what, June Lockhart, uh, somebody else, Timmy Provost, no, John Provost as Timmy and of course, Lassie. Um, and he said, and of course, Lassie. And of course, Lassie. Of course, yeah. Of course is, oh no, 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 if I do that. That's a horse of a No, horse. you did it, you <laughs> did it. <laughs> yeah, that's one. And, and another thing to remember is that back in the day, there was much more in the way of um, singing. There, there, the, the theme, songs would quite often be sung. Um, uh, what key can I do that in? A horse is a horse, of course, of course, and no one can talk to a horse, of course, unless, of course, that talking horse is the famous Mr. Ed. And, I mean, talk about an earworm. Wilbur. That, yeah, like a Wilbur. And, <laughs> I think during the course of that thing, they say the name of the show three times. This is not an accident. These things, they started to realize that the theme song was one of the most powerful things in the show. Um, and if I do this. Oh yeah, it goes pop. Yeah, um, everybody's thinking the same thing right now. That little cartoon thing where she comes out of the bottle and all that stuff. Iconic, absolutely iconic. Of course, it's I Dream of Jeannie. Yeah. Um, unlike most tunes, I Dream of Jeannie had different closing music than it did opening music. And Ralph's already singing it in his head. <laughs> So the walls, it just goes along. Um, let's see. And just by virtue of having been around since the 50s or 60s, some of these melodies have entered the popular domain as songs in their own right. triplets against the thing in the left hand. Um, anybody know what it is? Well, that's an old one. That's Peter Gunn. Peter Pat Palmari. Caught yeah. it. Peter Gunn yeah. right away. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this is an example of one of the tunes written by the guy who basically took over uh, writing for television back in the first wave. And that was Henry Mancini, who wrote so many TV things. Um, and uh, the last one that he wrote, I think, was one of his best. And uh, let's see if I remember how it goes. <laughs> It's the second one. The second one. 
Yep, it's Newhart. Uh, I think unless, I, unless I'm mistaken, that was the last thing that Mancini wrote for television. And he was just a master. Just all, and all this hardings, hard hitting stuff, you know, the hard boiled stuff back in, uh, in the 50s and 60s. Um, You don't hear that kind of stuff anymore. It's just so iconic, and it just really just it sets the mood for what you were about to see. Um, when we got into the '60s, there was nobody who really. Oh, excuse me. We we got into the '70s. There was no one composer who really sort of uh, was at the top of the heap. John Williams had just started writing for television. And he wrote stuff that I just am literally not able to play at the piano because it's just so orchestral. Uh, um, but the only one that I, I, I can even get to is Mancini did a lot of things for Irwin Allen, who did all those things. Time Tunnel, all the, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea. And it goes on to much more complex stuff that I can't play. But um, yeah, he... Uh, probably did more than anybody else, but still not a lot. Um, it was passed around among a bunch of other composers who did things like, uh, I gotta stop playing in C. Um, Again, everybody remembers those. So we got a request already. Evelyn Wright wants to know, is Valley of the Dolls somewhere in that? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. Um, it was that, uh, it was that song. It was that, uh, uh, ba, 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 ba. Uh, with all the meter changes. Da, 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 da. What was the tune? It, it was it, it was a uh, it became a popular tune. Also, she stumped you. Uh, yeah, she stumped me. That's one for Evelyn. Okay, you're never coming back. Uh, wait, one no, for no, no, Evelyn. No. It's no. Do 
you know where you're going to? Da, 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 da. I don't think so. Is that Valley of the Dolls? Yeah. Okay. One for Evelyn. One for, One Evelyn. for Evelyn out there. <laughs> Evelyn, you stumped the band. Yeah. Good for you. Uh, but along those, in, in the 60s like that, we saw things that, um, again, used a lot of, of like four-part choral writing. They sounded like, you know, little uh, jazz vocal groups. Um, from that era. Uh, Heavy Hurricane Sandy. <laughs> no, we're getting into the classics yeah, now. Yeah. Green, green, there, green, is, green, there, green, is some, there are some that I uh, considered doing, but they were they just they were so non-piano that I really couldn't do it. Oh, yeah. Junction. Yeah, I needed my train whistle. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then the there was one that was associated with that show. so that Ava Gabor could pretend to sing. Oh, I'm talking about uh, Green Acres. And then, uh, what was it? Uh, the chores, the stores, fresh air, Times Square. You are my wife. Goodbye, City, Bye, City Life. I'm going to get all nerdy for a minute here. And most, yeah, as opposed to what I've minute. been doing so long. Um, most of these tunes are written in major keys, and there's not a lot of what we call chromatics. They don't go outside the scale. Um, uh, uh oh, and I'm blanking on it. And there's a harmonic in there I can't do. And then it does some key change. Yeah. <laughs> you yep. got a ringer in here. Yes, I know. So the peanut gallery is now saying, how about some Bob James themes? Well, it's okay. I only know one um, that I can absolutely attribute to him. And I was going to get to it later, but I'll do it now because it's absolutely one of the most gorgeous things that um, ever got put on television. Um, oh, oh, God, I'm, I'm blanking on the first phrase. 
Um, It's, it's, it's a woman's name. I can't remember the actual name of the tune, but no matter what the title was, everybody was just call, going to call it the theme from Taxi. Yeah, and Bob our, James. And our peanut gallery got that as well, right? Ralph Meyer. I, yeah. And he said, how about Taxi's next door neighbor, Barney Miller? Ooh. Oh, yeah. And our New York contingent. <laughs> that it was just a jam session I mean after that opening which is just so iconic it was just a bunch of guys blowing solos you know but uh, yeah that thing um, uh, was plenty memorable enough and it was just it, it was uh, electric bass down there low by itself which is something you don't hear very often starting with a really low instrument unless you go uh, With this, um, the the bass melodica. That was a Quincy Jones arrangement, and he always had that ear for the, you know, the unusual but perfect instrument to, to do for a particular tune. And uh, Norman Lear used different people for all his shows. Um, so we've got we've got a New York contingent coming from New York City watching. Yeah. And they want to know how about F Troop? Ooh. Whoa. F Troop. This is for New York. <laughs> and there's a bridge, but I can't remember it. I've got a bridge in New York, I'll say a really cheap. A cheese. bridge in New York. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and germs. Yes. I'll have the veal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, um. It really was just piano at the beginning. You remember that scene? 
Of course, you all know what the tune is, right? Yeah, all in the family. And Archie and Edith were sitting around and Edith was playing the piano. It was just the two of them. Now, musicians would suffer through, you know, the 28 minutes until they got to the closing theme, <clears throat> which was this melody played by an absolute god of jazz pianos, piano players named um, Roger, uh, <laughs> I've done it now. Um, help me out, kids. Tommy Flanagan, I'm sorry, Tommy Flanagan. And uh, I won't be able to play it, but. stay and listen and see how much of that we could uh, learn and copy. Um, were there any other? Well, you know, the uh, Norman Lear? The L.A. contingent was saying, how about some good times? Good times. Um, we had people watching all over the country. start uh, I like most tunes you remember the chorus because that's what they want you remember mm, temporary layoffs <laughs> of that Norman Lear stuff was very, very hip because he prided himself on being very hip. Um, we get into the late 70s, early 80s, and then we hit the Mike Post era. Um, Mike Post is an absolutely brilliant musician who got his first Grammy when he was 23 years old because he arranged this song. Uh, classical Gas by Mason Williams. Mason Williams, yeah, yeah. Um, Post was a staff arranger, um, and he got on the television scene, and it was it was a blessing and a curse. Um, he did, oh my gosh, pretty much every Stephen Bochco show, every Stephen Cannell show, like you know, A Team. Uh, what was the one with uh, 
Jan Michael Vincent in the helicopter. Um, Airwolf. Airwolf, yes. He did, uh, he did all, those th all those things. And as he got, as he, just about as he hit his prime, um, the Yamaha Music Corporation came out with a synthesizer called the DX7. And it had a very distinctive kind of chimey kind of sound. And oh my God, you couldn't walk 12 feet in any one direction in the early 80s without stumbling over something played on a DX7. I had one. Um, but when Post got a hold of this and all the timbres and the colors that were associated with it, he just started cranking out these things. Um, and I have made some notes. Uh, let's see. See, no. here's where the Mike Post thing comes no. in. They're, they're great tunes, but he jumped on that sound, that synthesizer sound, and as a result, the tunes all sounded the same. But they were great tunes. That, by the way, was Doogie Hauser MD. Oh, yeah. Another Bochco show. Yes. Uh, That's going out to all the medical folks out there. Yes. That are our first line responders that are just doing a fantastic job. Two Mike Post tunes were those. Greatest Saint Elsewhere. No. Saint Hill Street Blues. Saint Elsewhere and, and Hill Street Blues. I mean, he, um, in addition to this particular sonic palette with the synthesizers and everything, he adopted um, a harmonic sense that, Rick, you will back me up on this, pretty much comes straight out of Todd Rundgren. <laughs> Um, and harmonically, it's very simple. It's just triads, but we just put them in, or he puts them in unexpected places. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh yeah, and here's the one, here's one that he did earlier in his career, and it doesn't quite sound as much like himself.
Okay, yes, it's Rockford Files. Rockford Files. And you hear, you, you know, same, uh, same basic kind of style. Um, okay, the Cincinnati contingent. Oh, no. Cincinnati contingent wants to know about that famous radio station <laughs> that lived on the air in Cincinnati. Um. God is my witness. I thought for certain turkeys, <laughs> turkeys could, fly. could fly. Yep. Soap. Okay. Yeah. You know yeah. Our, our Hudson contingent. Our Hudson contingent. Yes. He's the guy that comes. He's asking for all the wacky stuff. How about some Neil Hefty themes? Neil Hefty themes. I again hard to play on the piano. Um, that, of course, was, um, Donna can't come up with a funny answer. I was going to say. The Cape Crusaders strike again. Well, yes, the Cape, yes. I was gonna, that, of course, was Masterpiece Theater. Um, yeah. <laughs> PBS. Yep. Um, and then we hit the disco era. And, uh, um, again, there was no one guy who sort of reigned supreme over the disco era. But you heard things like this. Yes. What? Charlie's Angels. Charlie's, Charlie's Angels. Angels. Yes. And again, it's one of those things, if you remember, the signature of that theme song was a bell tree, that little that little tinkly thing that went through. Again, not easy to do on the piano. Um, and uh, things like, um, um, all right, they're coming in. From, the New York contingent is going crazy. They want to know, can you do Love Boat? Oh, my gosh. If I had Jack Jones here, I could do yeah, Love Boat. Yeah. Man, yeah, talk about, I mean, just... Yeah the epitome of the disco era. Or Love American Style.
one of those where I have to start by remembering the chorus. And what's, what's the verse? What's the rest of it? Um, oh, yeah, I remember. That was, yeah, yeah. But the chorus, yeah. Uh, and again, that was their job. Grab you with that chorus and never let go. Um, from the ubiquitous Mike Post. John Sebastian. That's right. Uh-oh. Yes, Mom? Oh, I thought you had a suggestion. So we have now got people across the country watching oh, this. Across the country. L.A. to New York watching. Challenging me. Challenging me. Someone said Arnold. Oh. And oh. Greatest American Hero. I already did Greatest American okay. Hero. I missed that. Arnold, I got not a clue. Oh. You know, not a clue. Sorry, New York. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, all Houston? that... Uh, uh, Nickelodeon cartoon. stuff, oh. Rugrats, and all that. A bunch of great music there, a lot of which was done by a good old uh, Akron boy, Mark Mothersbaugh, mm -hmm. one of the guys from Devo. Yep. He moved out and started a company called uh, Musica Mutata. I did some contract work with him, and he's just, I mean, he's taken over that animation, uh, <laughs> uh, that kingdom. Every now and then he'll do, like, a real film, but, uh, yeah, he's made his mark in the, in the uh, animation thing. And, of course, that all-time classic uh, Prisoner of War show. Ooh. I know nothing. Yes. I see nothing. Oh a, nice, yeah. uh, a nice Marshall key. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. That's the wrong one. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Somewhere, and I just it just doesn't. I it's not coming to me, but yeah, Hogan's That's Heroes. So, yeah, Colonel Clink released them all. Did I already pass the Mannix era? Um, oh, well, that goes backwards. That's really, bad. yeah, that's really sort of okay. on the tail end 
of the uh, 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 of the Mancini stuff. And for the life of me, I can't remember who did that arrangement. But what a killer tune, uh, Mannix. <laughs> I mean, I would love to play a big band arrangement of that chart. That's it's a great tune. Someone said play Hogan as a polka. Oh god. <laughs> it's not that far from it. You know. And <laughs> yeah, it's pretty close to it anyway. And yeah. get smart. Doom, 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 oh, doom, yeah. doom, doom, doom. Uh let's put it in a different key. Oh, what, what is that thing down at the bottom? Oh, it's not, no. Oh, that's another one. Uh, no. I think you're right. Remember? And just, it was just such a brilliant piece of picture and music. And they, they, and there's, you know, there's this big shot course, and the whole band, and he's in the phone booth, and he gets, and he dials the thing, and and uh, drops, and he drops in absolute silence, and that works. He falls, you know, down into the lower levels of, uh, not chaos, control. but control, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, As he dials the phone, too. Yes, he dials For you the young phone. folks out there, yeah, we used to dial the phone. <laughs> and and in, in that gap where there's absolutely no sound, he just disappears from the screen. And then, wham, 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 you know, ah, they don't write like that anymore. Can you do um, Did I do this one? Obviously. obviously. Magnum PI, Magnum baby. PI. Magnum PI. <laughs> so we've got um, Patrick, oh gosh, what was his name? Did a lot of uh, arranging. Um, that mm -hmm. was the Bob Newhart Bob show. And that was the first one. And Bob Newhart's companion, Mary Tyler Moore. Well, see, he, yeah, Patrick, and I, I'm blanking on his last name now. Um, but we, we have now folks watching from all corners of the U.S. <laughs> Northwest, yeah. L.A. area, bunches waiting, of them, New York City, and, waiting, of course, yeah, Ohio. Yeah, waiting for Belarus to chime in. Don't forget, we are doing a PayPal thing. It pops up on the screen once in a while. It's yes, a way to help support local music in Northeast Ohio. Um, I'll fire that thing on right now. And um, you can uh, 
you know, kind of help us out a little bit because, you know, our gig yeah, calendars yes. have dried up. So we're doing these, <laughs> these COVID <laughs> concerts uh, live streaming. There'll be more of these coming up in our new uh, Step the Stream Up process here. So. And I'm going to need some rehab after this. <laughs> and we're not responsible if these are stuck in your head forever. Request for someone all the way across the Pacific into Hawaii. Yes. Hawaii Five O. Oh. Um, yeah, you need all the drums and everything, oh, yeah. but it's. Uh, <laughs> and all that stuff. The, the, the calls are coming in. Philadelphia, New Orleans, Washington, uh, Seattle area, L.A., New York City, Hudson, Ohio. We've got viewers all over the country. It's pretty wild. I'm flattered. Um, <laughs> and they're loving it. They're says, keep these tunes coming. Thank you very much. It's always good to come home to Akron, now, Travis couple, Scott, New Orleans. Yeah. Mash. Mash? Yeah. Yeah. That's another example of a tune that... Uh, has become kind of a jazz standard. Mm -hmm. When I was living in Chicago in the second half of the 1970s, um, I went to this little restaurant in a strip mall where I heard the Bill Evans trio with Bill Evans and uh, Billy Joe Jones and who was playing bass? Yeah, I don't remember. And I remember he played this tune and it was just... It was transcendent. Johnny Arrange, I think it was written by Johnny Mandel, who uh, still reigns supreme as the king of Hollywood writing for strings. If you wanted a string arrangement, you hired Johnny Mandel. Um, he did many of the more striking moments on most of Prince's albums. He and Prince's dad, who also was an arranger. But Johnny Mandel wrote uh, 
I don't want to say anything because I might be wrong. I think he might. No, 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 no. But I don't know specifics, but I know that he helped out. Uh, How about the theme from Rawhide? Oh. Hey, I just, I'm not, I'm not yeah. picking these. I'm just watching yeah, what the peanut gallery is doing. <laughs> Um, yeah. Because on the picture, little Eddie, he slipped on a rock or something. And uh, Harry Nilsson, right? Is that Harry Nilsson? Yeah. Yeah, he wrote, when he wrote the song and recorded it, he went back and changed it so that when, you know, when Eddie falls off the rock, right there in the middle of the song, he just goes, whoops. <laughs> yep. That's, and what was the other? Did you say Bonanza? Bonanza. Uh, again, not one for the piano. But uh, it's uh, always a challenge. Yeah. Yeah, that was a. Uh, um, an L.A., if I remember right, it's an L.A. S session guitar player named Al Kaola who wrote that. He tuned his guitar way down. Yeah, like a dang, 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 dang. Oh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stand and our Bandstand. New York contingent exactly. pulled it up right away. Yep, yep. Um, oh, I almost forgot. Uh oh, we're on. Yeah, Speaking of Bill Bixby, uh huh. That oh, okay. Can we take a look at that? My favorite mantra. It's got that theremin thing in the middle. And I can't remember. No, that's that woman from the other side. The I bridge. Um, well, I have been stumped yet again. Um, I, was gonna, I was gonna mention we can't forget Hanna-Barbera. Oh, I can't um, forget Hanna-Barbera. The, yeah, the, this was all a guy named Hoyt Curtin who arranged these things for studio orchestra. And he would have 90 people in these arrangements. You listen to the Jetsons, which, you know, I, I can get through it, but you're going to want to hear that Wurlitzer piano going, you know, all that stuff. Just kill. 
killer arrangements. Um, even things like Huckleberry Hound and all that. But oh. the, the, the top three um, are the Jetsons. My personal favorite, Top Cat. Top Cat. Um, <laughs> It's like the eighth bar in, and they do it for one bar, and I think they just did it for fun. You know, it's, it's going along and it's swinging. One bar. They go into a double time thing. I remember hearing that when I was about six years old. It was like, that's not right, but I like it. Yeah. So we had yeah. the Jetsons, the Space Age. We go all the way back yeah, to the Neanderthal yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neanderthal and, time. And the third, the third of the uh, the Holy Trinity of Hanna Barbera, uh, Flintstones. Yes. What a killer! Ch I mean, it's basically musicians out there. It's basically rhythm changes for uh, you know I got rhythm, uh, George Gershwin, but. Um, uh, I just want one of those record players that's like the bird. Of course, I you just know. like the Stoneway piano that uh, the Stoneway that, that rock Hoagie Hoagie Car Rock. Cool. I forget Hoagie Carmichael was a guest star on yes. the Flintstones. Hoagie, I'll say that again. Hoagie Carmichael was a guest star on the oh, Flintstones, <laughs> I, and he wrote some tune specifically for the episode. I don't remember what it was, but at the end of it, yeah, he had to make a quick exit. I remember he and Barney played four hands on the piano and sang a duet. And then at the end of it, he took this piano, folded it up into a suitcase, and got off stage. Hoagie Carmichael was a guest star on the <laughs> Flintstones. Oh and he played the Stoneway <laughs> piano. Yep. <laughs> Is that a great tune? That's I an awesome tune. I think that tune. might be another Bob James tune. So yeah. someone said, you know, they, they actually did this little parody for Governor DeWine, Ohio's governor, a few weeks back on the Laverne and Shirley show Ooh, theme. And yeah. uh, oh, we've got a light oh, that's so acting yep. up. Uh,
that's not, not my post. There are definitely my <laughs> post influences in there. Uh, let's see. I'm going down my list. Pink Panther? Pink oh. Panther. That was a TV show. Yes, it was. Yes. It was a cartoon. longest fall off in the history of music. And the last note lasted like 10 seconds. Bah! Another Mancini tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so some, somebody said, try Murder, She Wrote. Nice little classical exercise ooh. with Alberte bass. Yeah. Any, does anybody remember the tune? Gallery. How about yeah, you folks out at home want to try and hum it through your phones? Yeah. Anybody wants to send me an email <laughs> <laughs> with the lead sheet? Uh, yeah, it was one of those. <laughs> Another uh, Mike Post, another Stephen Cannell show. He just he wrote for all those things. What do we have here? I'm looking at okay. Here. Our New York contingents coming back with the theme from the Rocky and Bullwinkle show. Oh oh. Closing music. I can't remember if it was the the the, That's where the opening janitor theme kind of or not. Yeah, mops yeah. the floor. Uh, Different we, strokes. Uh, Where's uh, I'm gonna try and stop the band I'm here. I'm gonna put it in different key. Then I get late. I I I, I can't get the second eight bars. But uh, yeah, there Barry you go. Mullins. Yes. Looney Tunes. Looney Tunes. Oh. All right. Oh, Warner Looney Brothers. Brothers. Yeah. Wow. Uh, 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 uh. Well, I'll put it here. Entire orchestra. Um, here's one nobody's going to get. This is one of my favorites from back in the day. Uh, let's see.
For those who didn't know, that's the theme from yeah. Hercules. It was a, a low-grade cartoon back in the day. Back clutch I Cargo. We went Clutch. I, I can't do Clutch oh, Cargo. Clutch Cargo and Hercules, yeah. all that same bad I, I animation. I tried to remember it, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I will uh, slip that into uh, um, if I'm playing a club date or something. <laughs> I may just swing in a little tune. But it was this big march, because, you know, mm -hmm. I'm Hercules. It was yeah. the I Love Lucy tune. Oh, yeah. That's another tune that gets played as a standard. It's a great tune, and people play that just as a tune. You know, I'll play it on club days. It's amazing that we're getting requests for things, and the gallery is coming back saying he's already played that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you, gallery, for keeping track of what we've been playing. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, um, Overtures, curtain lights. Yeah. <laughs> orchestra arrangement. Um, there must have been 60 people in the orchestra to record that stuff. Oh, killer stuff. Um, oh, I was going to say, what's, what's the next tune I'm about to do when I talked about there were two tunes that you recognized because they were whistled? Andy Griffith. There we go. Andy Griffith. <laughs> and Gomer Pyle. And then, remember they had the harmony whistles? I always thought that was so cool. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get it from the first two notes. Or 
Like right. you, I remember you playing that. It was about the only thing you could play on the tenor saxophone. <laughs> the Hudson contingent. This is, a, this is a man who doesn't play the tenor saxophone. The Hudson contingent wanted to know if you could do the Mission Impossible Ooh, theme. Oh, yeah. And Lalo. McHale's Navy. Oh. Mm-hmm. <coughs> What's McHale's Navy? I keep, th- I keep hearing Hogan's Heroes. Nope. Yeah. yeah. Um, but... Uh, See if I can do this. chord with the whole band, Lalo Schifrin, um, uh, a serious composer. And that was, yeah, that's, I mean, there mm. are coordinative problems going on there. But uh, that's another classic. Um, I was going to mention something. What was it? Uh, oh, oh yes. We have to get to um, all the other Star Trek stuff. Um, when Next Generation came out, a guy named Dennis McCarthy took over and did um, a lot of the new themes. And yes, remembering the themes for the Star Trek shows is a cottage industry in itself. Uh, versions than that depending on how much time they needed for the credits and I think there were a couple of measures that I left out well, um, the LA contingent just came back and said you gotta play the theme song from my favorite part of LA where I go every winter favorite part of LA. the Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see now there's a yeah there's there's another tune um, uh, that uh, um Hard to do on the piano. Lesser flat and Earl Scruggs, man. Just picking on that. Um, black gold, Texas tea. Um, and, oh, come on, I can't think of how it goes. I'll play an E. said a little something. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. They said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills, that is. Swimming pools, movie stars. And there was, I mean, those guys were picking. That was serious stuff. And they did up until, I forget, through like maybe the first season or something, they were the background music. And then they replaced it with more conventional orchestral stuff. I just want to go out to that cement pond out the behind the house. cement pond, yeah. Um, <laughs> we'll cook up some vittles after we're done. <laughs> yep. There were a couple of shows that used um, existing well-known songs for the theme music. <laughs>
That gives you a hint that that was the Joe Cocker version, mm -hmm. which was the theme song for what? Wonder Years. Wonder Years. Wonder Years. Wonder Years. Yep. And there's another tune, uh, another song that used an existing well-known tune for their theme music. Uh, and let's do it here. Children. Yeah, it was just, it was the Frank Sinatra chart. They Love just marriage, used it. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wonder was, Years. Hmm? Wonder Years? Wonder Years was uh, um, Get By with a Little Help from My Friends. Yep. Oh, that's it. Okay. Yeah. And. I don't remember it at all. <laughs> but uh, there was another I wanted to mention that uh, used an existing um, an existing song, an existing well-known song for the theme show, the, the theme music. Um, course anyone anyone okay. the Danny Thomas show yes that just came oh, up on Danny the boy oh Dan yep Danny Thomas yeah. just came up on the gallery yep yep uh, let's see what are some other cool things that oh <laughs> oh he's going live folks Yes, the Patty Duke show. Patty There's another Duke? one. It was like eight part vocal harmony, swinging like mad. You just don't hear that anymore. And God, we've been doing this for almost 90 minutes. Um, yeah, well, it's happy days, the Fonz. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I want to say something first. Um, and it's, it's 
partially, if it's anybody's fault, I think it's um, uh, reckless capitalism and technology. That's, I could be talking about anything, couldn't I? Um, but they've been trying to cram more and more commercials into television shows. And what's one of the first things you can cut out is the theme song segment. And um, nowadays, technology has also aided that because like I said before, they would produce this fixed piece that would run at the beginning of every episode. And you'll still see that um, you know, that thing was the same every episode. But nowadays, the majority of, of TV shows, network shows especially, there's no theme music as such. There may be sound design. There may be a two second spot where the name of the show shows up and something happens like that because technology allows them to just insert that into anything that's happening. They can put that on top of an existing scene and everything just blends in so they don't have to devote time to a theme song. Um, is it regrettable? Yeah, I think in some cases, you know, look at all this, all this iconic, recognizable stuff that we've gotten from uh, what was essentially, uh, what, what started out as uh, something to do while they showed credits. But- And now they're going right to the next thing. You don't even, well, yeah, the credits yeah. are getting, getting cut. Yes, and <laughs> you watch them uh, spin the final <laughs> credits at the end of the show. Yeah, faster than anybody can read. Yep. So they can cram in another suppository commercial. <laughs> and, um, you know, it, I just really think it's a kind of shame. We're going to have to do another one of these because there are so many more that I just didn't get to. You have to do one more. I have to do one more. What? Simpsons. Oh, yeah. And someone Ooh. said Friends and just Gidget. Did. Okay, it's in yes. Friends. Okay, and Gidget. Oh, gosh. Gidget. Gidget. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's and it's Danny Elfman. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the Danny Elfman School of Orchestration, which is, oh, there's an instrument. We'll put that in here. Yeah. Um, da, ba, 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 da, da. I'll get out of it this way. Thank you and good night. Yeah. Um, we're going to do this again. I mean, I had a whole bunch of fun. I hope people enjoyed it. Um, and uh, it's nice having real people in the room. And uh, uh, watch this space. If you feel inclined, please contribute a little bit because it helps me keep this going. I have to thank Steve Savanyu for his uh, remarkable audio, video, and his Ed McMahon in impersonation. Hey, um, I'm just, just over here on the sidelines, you know. Yes, you are correct, sir. You are <laughs> correct, sir. <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, 90 minutes flew by for me. I imagine not everybody stayed for the whole thing. But thank uh, you. Well, we, we really appreciate we it. Had a stream, we had to stream twice. It was streaming on mine as well as yours. So I, okay. I, I've got an average viewer count because I've been monitoring your stream, and uh -huh. there's been several watch parties as well on this oh. going out. Um, so basically, we were all over the country watching this, and we're getting wonderful comments and lots of applause. We'll, and uh, we'll fade it out on this, and everybody in the room can sort of sing along. <laughs>
good. <laughs> 